Good morning, apparently we're live. I didn't notice, I tapped on it by accident and there we were, live. So hello, good morning, welcome to Natasha Makes. This is day two of our birthday week, oh yes. Uh, so the balloon is still up, yes. The kids haven't spotted it yet, which is amazing. Which is why that is still managing to be there. I've got to put my lip gloss on this morning, it's a bit of that. Um, are you all well, who have got? Martin Allison, hello, Lorraine, Christy, hello, Christine and Wendy and Ruth. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Are you all hunky-dory tickety-boo? That's what I need to know. Uh, we have got a Liberty-tastic show for you today. Oh my goodness. Um, it's really beautiful, isn't it? There's something about Liberty that just screams quality and, um, and it's timeless. It's a classic, you know where you are with it. It's a real safe bet. The quality is exquisite. Um, it's only been in the last few years that Liberty have um, increased their portfolio in the types of cottons that they sell. Normally you would know them for Tana Lawn, that's what they are most well known for, uh, which is a type of Egyptian cotton Tana Lawn is made from very fine, very long um, cotton fibres, which is why it's incredibly robust, but incredibly silky and drapes beautifully, which is why it's a dressmaker's dream. Now, this is a quilter's weight cotton, so same great quality cotton, morning half pint. Um, but for this one, this is a heavier weight for quilters. You can still dress make with it, which is why we've got lots on the website. So I'll buy the half metre cut to order for you. So do take a look at the website this morning. WW get. Hello. Hi. You just want to in on the action, don't you, this morning? Her allergies are playing up a little bit at the moment, so she's looking a little bit mothy. Let's have you look. Jane's in the other room. Go and find Jane. She loves you. Bear with me. I'll be back. Go on. Off you go. Bye-bye. I'm not sure if it's that her allergies are playing up or if she just sits so close to the, um, to the iron that she's actually just singeing herself. <laughs> Jury's out on that one. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to bring you um, some classics, some of my favourites, some of Jane's favourites, some of um, Inga's favourites as well this morning. And... Oh, and some of Emily, my daughter's favourites as well. She's got a cracking eye, it turns out, for fabric. And um, and she she just she just goes for it. We had two boxes with 22 bolts of Liberty in. She cast her eye along the whole lot and grabbed two bolts, put them together with my favourites, and, and they were stunning. Which ones were they? They're over there, I'll show you in a minute. Just, I was like, whoa, I'll just, uh, I'll just hand it all over to you, age two, that's fine. Um, so yeah, we've got, we've, I mean, we've got the flower, um, flower show, which was the winter version of their flower show. Um, on the show today, we've got some of those. We have got, oh, the quilt in the background, those fabrics are for Emporium. That has been their latest one. They are due out a new collection soon. So this was the one that came out just before Christmas. Um, uh, was, it, was it November? Like in the last month, a couple of months anyway. And we've got a whole load of those for you on the show, along with some backing fabrics, beautiful backing fabrics, along with quilt as you go bags as well. And we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty. I know there are loads of people that have demonstrated quilt as you go. Ah, oh, that's where my strapping went. Um, and which is, which is fabulous. What I wanted to give you today were some hints and tips, if I'm fine what I've done with everything, hints and tips and cheats to make life easy. We're all for that, right? <laughs> we are all for that. So I've just got my little, my little bits here and there that I'll just put to one side so that I can show you the fabrics. But before we do fabrics, let's do our hellos. Let's see who we've got with us today. Um, so that you know, we have got, thank you everybody that shopped with us yesterday. And today we have got um, 
five pounds off when you spend 50 pounds and 10 pounds off when you spend 100 pounds with us today if you happen to dip in um again try and spend it all in one go because <clears throat> otherwise poor sj is going to get really swamped with with you going um so i spent 50 pounds earlier but i've just found another 50 pounds. it can be done it can be done it has to be in transactions today um, and if you can do it in one transaction that would be the easiest way for us um but if you are really desperate then info at uh, natashamakes.com and SJ can adjust your order for you. Bless her. She spent all day, she's like, a keyboard was on fire adjusting all your orders for you. Um, so we've got Wendy and Helen and Ali, good morning, and Syl and Becky, good morning to you. Um, Ali, morning, and Heidi, good morning. And uh, Stephanie and Dolly and Lynn, hello. Good morning, good morning, Donna, good morning, Colette, how are you all? Uh, and Margaret as well, and Helen, hi, hi, hi. Uh, Susan and Tracy and Jackie, oh, from Penzance, in a very nice part of the world. Um, and Rona, good morning to you. Um, Naomi as well, not working today, and Christine, well maybe you are but just under the radar uh laurie good morning um jane hi hi um anna sewing that good morning she's a little wave kind of makes me uh wave back heather good morning um jan and oh my goodness lots of you um there are two naomi's that like to watch so um I quite well, I had a best friend when I was little called Naomi and some people called her Naomi and some people called her Naomi. Um, I don't think anybody really ever knew. Uh, but there's, yeah, there's, we've got Naomi H and Naomi P. Good morning to you both. Um, Karen and Heidi and Leslie and Penny and Carol. Hello. Oh, you've got Sun, have you, in Leeds? Oh, you lucky thing. It's drear. It's a right drab old day here today. So I'm kind of in my comfies. Hello, April. How is it in Australia? I bet it's not drab and horrible like it is here. Um, and Audrey, good morning. Hello. Um, oh, Lisa. Ah, oh, hi, Lisa. How are you? Um, oh, I, yes, lots of exciting things happening. Um, I spent an hour on the phone to Lisa down in Australia. Um, oh my goodness, last week. Very, very, very exciting. So many things happening this year. It's it's really um, oh, just, like I don't ever want to wish my life away, but I just want to get going. I want to get it all, all done. It's so exciting. Um, Grace, hello, and Claire, good morning. I had to set my alarm not to miss your show. I enjoyed quiet time on my own. Too late last night. What's that? What is quiet time? Do you know what? No, you do it late at night. I get up early in the morning to get that quiet time. Let's have a look at these liberties, shall we? Um, oh, do you know what I forgot to bring in? I don't know if Inga or Jane are listening this morning. Gemma's working from home today. Um, sometimes you just need another fabric just to throw in. And the velvets that we've got, we've got a midnight velvet that is divine and works so well with the blues in this Liberty. And I don't know what you'd make with it, pouches, stuff like that. I, I kind of don't care. I just sort of need them to be together because they look beautiful. Um, and the reds as well in there with the red velvet, it's all gorgeous. Uh, so I just was hoping that Inga or Jane might be able to bring me some of those velvets. Um, just actually the green, we've got a bottle green as well, which might look rather nice. <laughs> Have we got, have we got, oh, oh, I mean, the roll will do, yeah. Have we got the green and the red in the warehouse? Okay, thanks. <laughs> you know, just a little bit, just a discreet amount of velvet. <laughs> Can you tell that I like it? I was like, mm. But now there is a reason for my madness, and that is, I wanted to show you these with them now we sell this oh, I don't know, by the fat quarter half meter something like that but just look i mean i hate to oh nice cobweb there um i hate to single this out but oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah lots of hearts coming up now um on uh, on the book of faces there look at that Woohoo! show my little fabric rail behind do you know <laughs> 
I, uh, the box arrived yesterday and I asked Ingrid and Jane just to pop it together for me this morning and they said, are we making bunk beds? I'm like, no, you're not making bunk beds, you're making a fabric ladder. <laughs> I love that they think they would come to work and I would make them make a bunk bed for Freddie. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> it's for the studio. <laughs> That's what it's there for, but yeah. Da -da -da -da. Uh, Jane's already altered it, it's all good. Uh, no, not that screen, this screen. Let's have a look at these. Hey! Oh, looky, looky, looky. I can't fit it all in the screen, look, there are so many. But I just thought how luxurious and gorgeous pouches and things like that, uh, just beautiful. And I, so you see, this is what I would do. I would get some of the, uh, some of the velvet. This wasn't where I planned this show going at all today, but it's just sort of happened. Um, I'd maybe get some of the velvet make some pouches and then just trim in a little bit of liberty. I'm kind of maybe trim in a little bit of the liberty um, because they're already pre-cut. Pre Beautiful. Look, and look, look at this. So maybe you wanted to go, hmm, actually, no, I don't like that blue with it. It's the midnight blue that's gorgeous. You've got to try these things, haven't you? Um, so yeah, so this is one of the bundles that we've got, Liberty Wise, for you. We'll have a closer look. Um, you can have it in long quarters. If I keep saying fat quarters, it's just because I've got fat quarters on the brain. It's long quarters because they're the easiest to work with with the June Taylor bags that we've got today. So long quarters or half meters, and you would get six half meters or six long quarters of Liberty. Absolutely, just look at this. I mean. It's rude not to, isn't it, really? <laughs> I don't Just pop in the comments, if you will, do me a favour, pop in the comments when you use Liberty. What do you use it for? Because I have a thing about Liberty, and I did a show on Hochanda with lovely Paula, and she said that as a child growing up, bearing in mind that her father's an artist, and, you know, he loves the, um, you know, the whole William Morris movement, um, arts and crafts, and of course, you know, Liberty's sort of synonymous with all of that. And, um, but she said that as a child growing up, when she came over to the UK from Spain, she remembers being treated, going to the store, to Liberty store, and being treated to um, a dress made out of Liberty fabric, and it was one of her favorites. And she's so right, I suddenly realized that, yeah, if ever there is a new baby or a birthday or something like that, and I want to make something special, a lot of the time, especially, and I don't know if this is the same with you, especially if it's someone that, doesn't know a lot about fabric, isn't a crafter themselves, isn't a sewer themselves, I will turn to Liberty and I will do something like, oh, okay, so for Emily, well, I mean, she's a baby, she doesn't understand about it, but you know, something like this, just something really, really, and I haven't finished this off yet. Um, uh, let me show you here. So this is just her initials. And it, happens, it just so happens that she's Emily McCarty, obviously, and we just call her M. So that just worked an absolute treat. Um, but just a little bit, just a little bit um, of liberty just to monogram or whatever it is that you're doing, but people recognize it. And this is why it tends to be my go-to, especially if someone's not a sewer and doesn't know that it's all, you know, the latest, um, I don't know, Lewis and I, or whatever, whatever make it is. I would turn to Liberty because everybody knows Liberty. You look at it and you know it's Liberty. So it, it's, it's kind of like justifying that gift. And it doesn't have to be all over. It's like, it's iconic. It's like your William Morris and, and you, you people like that, you instantly know who it is. So that's why I always keep a stash. And um, also um, for little ones, it's really beautiful. Just um, if you've got some left over, this is um, from my bib pattern. This was from the Tea Time collection. We've got the bib pattern on the show. Uh, we've got a couple of kits with the pink brushed cotton. Now these, you can look at the back of these, these have been worn and worn and worn by my daughter. This uh, pattern has fit her from birth. She's now two and a half nearly. This still fits her. 
still absolutely fits her. So she's got some Liberty bibs, which she absolutely loves. They're so soft. Um, and I've got some with that pink brushed cotton. I've only got a handful of those kits left. Otherwise, I've got some toweling, which I'll show you. But I've done it in everything from Liberty to Kate. So this is her curry bib. <laughs> I hate to admit this. Every time we have curry, she loves chicken korma. Every time we have curry, this is, this is her curry bib uh, because uh, it doesn't show up. <laughs> the stains don't show up. Um, and if we get a chance today, if not today, we'll do it another time. But I just thought, you know, with your offcuts, we've got so many beautiful fabrics. Uh, that are just perfect if you've got a bit left over just maybe you know making making up a quick a quick what have you so that meant that we also added to the show this and um I think it's got some of Jane's makeup on it because she was like she cut it and then went oh it's just so beautiful this is double-sided toweling and it suddenly struck me where if, you've, if you just want to use a snippet of your Liberty so that it stretches or you've just got some left over, you've got some binding left over, where can we use it in our home to make our home a little bit more luxurious or what have you? And toweling is a lovely way to do it, whether you bind the edges, whether you put a strip through and then you, um, you roll hem your edges or you serge them, overlock them, whatever description you want to use. This is Italian double-sided toweling. Um, in cream it's so soft and actually Gemma who works for us now but has many many years in the beauty industry said you know and we've done these before um, makeup removal pads just using these as your makeup removal pads great just cut yourself two circles the same size um, right sides together so round leave a gap turn through so round top stitch you're done and I use those all the time and it's, it's my go-to. It gets your makeup off. This is lovely and wide. This is just half a metre of it. Um, but you see, half a metre would do two. Hand towels. And you could, just, you could just bind that in Liberty for a bit of a je ne sais quoi, or you could mon uh, monogram it. Oh, it's all good. Who's saying what? What have we got? Um, let's just catch up with everyone. Can't believe it's one year today. Thanks for all you do, says April. Um, do you know what? It's been my absolute pleasure. Got me vitamin juice on the go this morning. Um, hi, Kaz. Hello, hello. Um, morning, Elizabeth. No notification today. Was there not? <gasps> How rude. Morning, gang, said Penny. Started my grandma's 12 inch by 8 inch quilt. Oh, foot, foot. Could you go curtain? Oh, ooh, um, I'm watching us. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Morning from Pitt and Weem. Hi, Jenny. Uh, fabulous frost patterns on the windows and car in the sunshine. Oh, Mother Nature's really beautiful, isn't it, sometimes? Uh, Jane says, I'm here too. Hello, Jane. Lovely to have you. And Louisa. Hi, everybody. And Mary. Hello, hello. Um, trying to watch whilst doing my exercise on the static bike. And I salute you. I have not done any proper exercise other than walk dogs for ages. It's disgusting. And I really need to. Um, there are two Donners, too, said Donna. Hello, Donna. Yes, there are. Donna and Donna, hello. Uh, and uh, Jan says, morning from a wet and windy Portland. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's Carol's birthday as well. Happy birthday, Carol. Um... Oh, April's still in summer, so warm here. Plenty of rain on and off, but not cold. Well, when I was talking to Lisa the other day, she said that it was, thir what was it, 36 degrees or something? It was 9 o'clock at night. That's just obscene. <laughs> Stephen, my husband bought me a new clock for in here, and it's got the temperature, so I can tell you it's 22 degrees today in the studio now that I've worked out that my heating uh, thermostat battery had run out, and that's why we were freezing. <laughs> so... <laughs> Let me show you this bundle. God, I've got a bit of a chat on today, haven't I? Let's have a look what we've got. So you can either have a long quarter or a half meter. Um, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now, you see, I love this because it feels a bit Art Deco-y, doesn't it? Just ever so, if it's used on its own, just ever so delicate. We are getting our overhead camera, by the way, but the guy's daughter had COVID, so we haven't been able to get him in uh, to sort it. So it's not, I haven't forgotten. And what about this? It looks like tiles. It's beautiful. Really beautiful. Imagine cutting that up for your patchworking. Stunning. 
And yeah, I mean, I could see that on sashings and borders and things like that. Just divine. Um, I would be tempted actually to do some dressmaking with that one. But together, you've got your darks, your midtones, your lights, your ditzies, your larger patterns. You've got everything, everything in there. Have a look on the website because the pictures are there. You realise now I've got to try and put it on my fabric ladder. I thought it'd be, so, or the bunk beds as it's now lovingly known. Bunk beds, what are they like, eh? Um, it's a good job that I like them, isn't it? They were making me howl this morning with laughter. Because uh, 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 uh. the thing is, because we're all distancing and being safe everywhere, we'll all be in different parts um, and sort of shouting to each other. You'll just hear a voice saying something really quite funny. Right, let's have a look at the, oh, the green, the green, the green. So these all work together as one big collection. Or you can, um, there's some of these are up by the half meter. Um, the bundle, we've put, we've kind of divvied up the collection into four different bundles, but the whole, you know, we've got all of those which all work beautifully together. But if you're just in the market for sort of six that go together, and we decided on six because the quilt as you go bags, let me show you what we've got. They all sort of stated a minimum of, um, a long quarter or a fat quarter of six, minimum of six. So we've got this, which is actually um, a thermal bag, one of the ones that you'd put your, your cool stuff in. So I think we're going to have another summer where we can't go that many places, so we do picnics instead. So that would be fab, or if you just want to keep your, your colds cold when you go shopping, Perfect. It's really roomy and huge. I will show you that in a moment. Uh, we have also got, well, these are all on the website, so do take a look. What do they call The Alexandra tote. Perfect for your two and a half inch strips. That's why we've done long quarters rather than fat quarters, so that you can cut, um, you know, your, your long lengths of that. Because then you can do your handles and, um, and those, because they need those longer lengths. So that's the thinking behind that. And then we've also got the Tory tote which is the one I'm going to make today. Hurrah! So that's what we're looking at. We've got those and others on the website. Do take a look. They're all on there. Now, the um, quilt as you go, so by numbers, insulated shopper tote. Do you want to see how huge that is? That's a big old picnic, isn't it? It's huge. Absolutely huge. There it is. I mean, that's, that's going to be a big shop. You might be thinking, what are these? What are these bits? Well, this means that if you want to put buttons on, then you could put buttons on the front and then you can just bring it in. If you don't need it to be that huge, I think this is such a clever design. And then you'd pop your buttons on. This hasn't got buttons on yet. And then it brings it down to that size. It's really clever, really clever. How much would you spend on a Liberty bag? And now you can have it in all the colours that you want. That's what I love about these things. There we go. And it's super roomy. Super roomy and big. Which leads me on to another thing that I'll talk about in a minute, which is the linings. Um, because on that you're going to... Actually, on all the linings, I think it's about three quarters of a yard. So say three quarters of a metre. So I've done you some planes that's your cheapest option, that's your most cost-effective option for your lining. Um, and we've got those by the half metre. So if you get yourself a metre, you'll have a load left over that you might want to work in with your design as well. Who knows? We'll look at those in a minute. Um, so let's have a look at these greens. They're just so gorgeous. Right, okay. So again, this beautiful, beautiful um, sort of tiled Victoriana type fabric gorgeous and then there's that in the green I heart this one very very much look at those just stunning this one feels slightly more modern I can imagine that in a gorgeous cushion 
Maybe that could be the main body of your cushion and then maybe you'd want a sash and something like that. Or maybe you want something bright and cheery because, you know, we want a bit of bright and cheery right now. And bring in that lovely hit of yellow. Or maybe you want something a little bit more delicate. Now, imagine these for your Easter makes. Wouldn't they be gorgeous? So there they are. So as a collection, working those greens, blues and yellows through together, um, I just think divine. Let's pop those back on the back on the rail. I'm not very elegant at doing this, am I? Ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> Jane made me some extra struts with uh, with balloon twine. We are nothing. <laughs> <laughs> if not uh, resourceful round here. Now let's keep that green theme going and that yellow and let's soften it up and bring in some pinks as well. So if you go for the ones that I've just shown you, this is kind of the other half of its colorway, just sublime. Uh, so let's have a look at these. I mean, yeah. I can see bindings and edgings and all sorts of goings on. Actually, I'll show you in a minute because when, <laughs> look at that, oh, look how beautiful they are. What I want to do is either in this fabric or this one, because they're both rather stunning, is to do Emily a cushion or a lunch bag or something and do her initial in this sort of this colour and then applique it onto there. But then I was thinking actually as I was looking through this with E appliqued in this would also be rather stunning. And then just to soften it all up Look at that beautiful primrose yellow in there. And all of a sudden, whoosh, the yellow out of that one comes and it all just merges and plays beautifully together. Now this goes with those darker greens that we've just seen if you want that darker tone to work through as well. But otherwise you've got quite a springtime palette here. Um, but if you want those more striking darker greens and those richer, stronger yellows, go with the other one as well or, um, you know, whatever. Maybe you want half a metre of these and long quarters of the others. It's entirely up to you. We've tried to do it so that you can mix and match it your way. Or if there's just one fabric that you absolutely love, we've got mm, most of them. I'd say 90% of them available by the half metre. Well, we did have one we came to wear. Excuse my back. Now that first row up there that I showed you with the blues, the beautiful blues, this is the rest. This is the other half of that palette, of that colourway. And it's got this striking gold in, which is just gorgeous. But let me show you this because sometimes it's, it's the simplicity of the pattern. Now we've just seen this in the pinks and the creams. Gorgeous gorgeous now um, well this is my other option so there's that and then so Emily when she chose her favorites she grabbed these two and said they're my favorites mummy they were the two that she chose so I guess really I should do the cushion with that and have that blue um, as her E shouldn't I you know uh, Toweling is all set up. Thank you, Gemma. Um, guys, do you want it by the metre or the half metre? And then the toweling is ready to go. Should we do it by the half metre so that you can do bibs? Let's do that. Um, please, Gemma. Uh, there we go. Yeah, this is the gold. And it just suddenly ping. And I hadn't noticed that this, this has a bit of gold in there as well but all of a sudden that highlight comes through and then if I work that gold through with this oh that's a bit special isn't it it all just works Gemma will tell you I agonized over how to put these bundles together last night I went through every permutation possible because I wanted to make it affordable for as many as you as I possibly can hence the discount code today um, it is oh hang on 
SJ, could you pop in the um, in the comments, please, what code? It's on the top of the website as well. There's a banner on the top of the website for you to use. Um, I think it's one B day, either five or ten, depending on how much you've spent. Uh, this is I pop the Wiltshire in here. The Wiltshire are like the posh Liberty blenders, and it just look it brings out the softness in here and here and here. Just loving it. So I always agonise. I mean, it's it's not a bad agony to have, is it, really? <laughs> Over how to how to bundle this so that it's appropriate for for as many of you as I can. But that's why I always fall back on trying to leave a few that are just by the half meter. If you love one, you want to top up on one. Um, if you've if you're dressmaking, I know that there was one that Inga made me buy an extra ten meters of. She's like, could you just because uh, I'd quite like a dress out of that if you don't mind. So yeah, <laughs> we've got. An extra 10 meters of one that I don't think I'm allowed to sell because Inga has decided she's going to learn to dress make. <laughs> and I actually, I can show you which one it is. Um, it's in this bundle, which is the flower. Oh, hang on. I think it was this one. She's like, I just want to dress out of that. I'm like, okay. I'll show you those in a minute. I've got one more from the Emporium range to show you. They had a third colourway, um, but I couldn't get all of it. So what I did do was this. And lots of you were asking for it because this was what I made the storage in yesterday. I mean, yes. <laughs> Just yes. What I've done is I've teamed it with a half metre of your rhubarb there. Beautiful just beautiful now also by the half meter i've got some more of these wiltshires and i only mention it because if you wanted to you know i think this is the denim one i want to say it's denim if, you, if i just stand that there it's a bit beautiful too, isn't it? I throw it out there as an option anyway. We always have options. But this one is available by the half meter. And this is what I mean. It was so hard to decide <laughs> what to do. Um, yeah, just so, so hard. But this is what I made that in yesterday and I had a lot of people asking me for that so that's why I've bundled that because those two are just beautiful together um, so it would have been rude not to quite frankly very rude not to so let's put those to one side uh, right okay we're getting through we'll get to a demo in a minute but I do have lots of gorgeous fabrics for you these are the Wiltshire's like I say these are the ones that I have left um, by the half meter and I'm just going to bring to the fore these two because 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 these are the flower show a lot on that desk this morning haven't I let's get rid of that for a minute this is Emily's silhouette it's a classic an absolute classic I'm working with this today this one here is cosmos blooms again picking up that red in there beautiful um, same with the Adlington Hall is it Adlington Hall Adlington Hall which one is it? Which one is it? What's it called? Adlington Hall. That's it. I mean, just gorgeous. You could stack and whack that, couldn't you? Wouldn't it be divine? But English paper piecing. I've got some gorgeous English paper piecing things coming up. Um, and look at that with that. Wow. Just beautiful. And again, this is Inga's favourite. With good reason. Again, going beautifully with these blues. Um, and then this as well, picking up that red in there and this blue as well. Just beautiful. 
you can get these together um, I've got most of them I think there's one of them that I don't have by the half meter but some of these I've got most of these by the half meter if you want to just top up or add in or what have you um, now these are stunning the red actually also just to give you a little idea as well I mean yeah that's also why these are on the show because if I just lay that piece of fabric there you've picked out that tone of red you've picked out this minty green in there and you've picked out that lighter blue all through there with those three it I, it blows my mind how color works and I love it and it surprises me every day um, yeah so you know this is this is your option if you want to go liberty through and through then do it do it uh, <laughs> and um, yeah it just uh, I mean it's just it's just exquisite this works so beautifully with this row over there as well with those pink just gorgeous so let's pop that back on the dresser now I did mention for you as well that I had got some blenders for you not blenders um, I'd got some planes for you and um, I work hard like you do. I want my money to go as, as far as I can. So sometimes, 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 I, uh, especially if there's a lot of the lining, I kind of resent putting a really um, top, top notch fabric on it. And I'd rather just, like, especially a patterned one that you're not going to see. Sometimes I think, right, okay, let's go all out for the outside that we're going to see. And then let's have a plane that just works beautifully with it. Um, or if you're patchworking and you want a plane just to rest the eye, but you want it to go, then again, I know it's really hard on computers to find those colors, which is why I've got these for you and let me show you these here. Now you can buy these as a trio. You can buy these as a trio here. Or you've got crimson, cadet blue, gold. I'm just gonna lay that along there and instantly you can see it's picking out the red and it's picking out the blue and there are tiny little bits of gold in there. Uh, and when I first looked at it, I was like, mm, is that going to work? Now this one, oh my goodness, this one, look what that suddenly does to the gold in that. And then you've also got that blue in there and of course you've got that crimson in there. So again, beautiful. And we've also got these available by the half meter because if you want to make the bags, why not pop in a meter and then you can do your binding and your inner with that and you're not breaking the bank. Oh, I, I just love this one. And again, instantly, all those colors go pop. And it was just one of those things. I dragged these off the shelves and I was like, surely that's not going to work with all of them. But blow me down. Yes. Again, you've got the gold and the crimson in there. It's like, this is phenomenal. I love it when colours work like this. Just adore it. And then this one, um, I absolutely love with the crimson. And it's those two that I'm going to work with today. Okay. I, um, I've been working with June Taylor, Quilt As You Goes, for quite a while. And, um, you know, they always give you a serving suggestion, don't they, of what your bags can look like. And sometimes it's hard, you know, you look at it and you go, oh, is that what I want it to be like? Do I want it to be that way? You've got lots of different options there so many different options you know do you just want to do it as zigzags like that do you want to do flying geese how do you want to do it so i'm going to do a completely two-tone one so one that's not even on there so let's see what happens uh right 
I'm going to pop those up on there. <laughs> oh, all gorgeous. When you get your June Taylor, quilt as you go. It does come with instructions. There are lots of videos that you can watch. Look at that, a quick press, it's all crumpled. Um, on a Tinturinette as well. First thing you do is have a look through, read through all of the instructions and I went through and then just labelled what colour I wanted for which cutting instructions. The cutting instructions are super, super easy for this uh, because you've either got two and a half inch strips or you've got six and a half inch squares or four and three quarter inches and it was that that I wanted to show you. So. Hint and tip number one for you, before you even start, is prepare your fabric. You won't press your finger press, you won't press press whilst you're layering these fabrics up and sewing them down. So every fabric, every cotton fabric has a degree of shrinkage, all right? And as quilters, as opposed to dressmakers, dressmakers will always pre-wash their fabrics because the last thing they want to do is make a dress, have it shrink. Some cottons shrink six to seven percent. That's standard. That's normal. Um, but if you have a six to seven percent shrinkage on a garment that you've just made, you've got to dye it to get back into it. So if you're a dressmaker, always, always, always pre-wash your fabrics. But as quilters, we get really lazy. We get so lazy about that. Um, so what I would say to you is... If you don't want to pre-wash your cottons before you make this bag, because you've got to cut this um, absolutely spot on, and I'm going to ask you to best press um, so that your fabric is starched, because we're going to cut on a diagonal, so we're cutting through the warp and the weft, which means we're on the bias, which means there's some bend, which means we want to starch spray our fabrics before we start. Don't, 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 and this was mistake number one that I made, don't cut your fabrics, then press them and start spray them, best press spray them, whatever spray it is that you're using, because you could get, if you're heavy handed with the spray in any way, you could get that shrinkage just from steaming or, or using that best press spray. So because you want to be accurate with your cutting, um, my top tip for you is to best press your fabric before you cut. Just get one of the misters. This is the little mister bottle. We haven't got these ones in stock. We've got the big mister bottles, um, which means that your best press spray is going to go a really long way because it just gives it a fine mist. That's all you need. Press it and that is your fabric pressed. But what I don't want you to do is to have spent ages accurately cutting your fabric and then have any kind of shrinkage in any way. So either pre-wash your fabrics or best press before you cut. Nobody tells you that. No one tells you that. Let's just be really honest and open about it. Um, right, they are my handle straps. Let me put those to one side there. Um, now, yes, so my cutting instructions for my fabric meant that I have got to create some triangles. Now, if you're using a stripology ruler, which is one of the best ways to accurately cut, for me, it's safe, it's quick, it's accurate, love it. Um, but you'll notice that these grooves that you put your, your blade in are every half an inch. But for those of you that are new or just using your, your stripology rulers, if you're new to stripping, yep, uh, <laughs> then what you need to also notice is this line here. So this is your zero line. That's where you will put your blade in to just trim off your edge of your fabric every time you start. Stri uh, trim off at zero so that you know you've got your edges starting brilliantly every single time. This is quarter of an inch. So where I want four and three quarter inch squares, I'm going to cut my zero. I'm going to realign it with that quarter inch. And then I will cut on the four and a half there because I've added that quarter inch there because I've got my fabric aligned there. Okay, does that make sense? So you can always either add or take away quarter of an inch with your stripology ruler on the big stripology. I haven't got the big one out. I think it's even got extra 
Bear with me, caller. Let me have a little look. Uh, on the big one, yeah, you've got you've got even more increments on there. So they're thinking of you. They are thinking of you. These ones will be back in stock soon. Hopefully, they are. They're even out of um, out of stock with Creative Grids themselves. So as I say, I am going to trim off that edge it means I'm working with a nice flush edge get rid of those then I'm going to align it now if you're new to using your stripology I know loads of you bought uh, have bought these over Christmas from us uh, let me just show you every time I'm lining up the edge of my fabric along one of these horizontal lines so that everything is squaring up perpendicular and perfectly whether you line it up along the top or along the bottom no odds to me just make sure that you line it up I've moved that was my zero line I've moved it across that quarter of an inch there and then I'm going to go four and a half inches there move your fabric pull the fabric out make sure that you have given it enough welling and cut through that's absolutely fine but I don't want a square I mean it's a perfect square then all you do is line up your zero line from the tip to tip blade in cut and there we go that's all of my half square triangles prepped and done easy muck peasy right okay so the next thing that you're going to need to do it was done accurately safely not wobbling around anywhere <laughs> post christmas there's only one thing that should be wobbling around here uh, and it isn't my ruler that's for sure so when you open up your packet uh, then what you will do the very first thing that you will do is spray baste your backing fabric once you've cut so cut you've got um you've got a sheet with handles on just cut the handles off put them to one side look here they are here they are they've got wadding for your handles just trim those away don't do anything with them yet we'll come back to those um, so this is the rest of the bag all printed on there ready for you to go and all I've done is spray base my my lining fabric on there now I sprayed onto and I did it in a well ventilated area away from flames and all that blah 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 health and safety stuff um, which is why I'm not doing it on here spray onto your lining fabric and then put your wadding on top now i use a repositionable spray because quite frankly i don't get it right first time so let's make life easy and let's just use a repositionable spray lovely job done now if you want to at this point um whoops yeah see there's still a bit of stick on there so i would just trim this back leave yourself at least a half an inch around but you can trim trim back tidy it up um, and you're going to be good to go when i what am i trimming away from i'm trimming away from the solid lines and i've got some other top tips for you in just a moment because when you get and I, yeah i'm cutting in like an extra half inch there there we go So not on the line, cutting away. You can rough cut this with a pair of scissors if you wish. It really makes no odds at all. Just, wee. It doesn't matter if it's more than half and it just making sure. When you quilt, it can just sort of pull that lining in a little bit. So you just want to make sure you've given yourself a little bit of leeway. That's all we're doing here. Yeah. I was really nervous about this one because I thought, oh, it's triangles. I'm used to working with creative grids, which help you so much when you're working with things like triangles and they'll cut off, you know, dog ears and stuff to make it really intuitive to you. So I was a little bit nervous about this, but I have to say I am super duper duper impressed with it. So once you've got it at this stage, there is, this isn't in the instructions. This was a tip that I picked up um, that 
is fabulous because when you've got everything sewn on, you are then going to cut on this blue line, but often the fabric will go over the edge. Now, at the edges, I don't know if you can see here. Oh, no, I want this one. At the edges, they take the lines over so that even if you, your fabrics come along a bit, you can still see, you can still line everything up. And they do it here as well so that you can line everything up. That's fine, and you'll be cutting on this line. But sometimes here, it's difficult to see. So my top tip is, with a contrast thread, sew on this line, on this solid line, all the way around the outside. Um, because then, when you trim everything at the end, you can do it from this side and it's easier to see. Now they won't tell you that in the instructions, this is just a little handy tip um, that I'm giving you now. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and do that, then do that. Um, it's entirely up to you. In the meantime, it is sewing by numbers and this is number one. So number one is this square here and I'm going to do that with... Did I actually, did I actually cut <laughs> these strips? I don't know that I did so we might have to have a look at how big that needs to be because I only cut off the ends of my straps which are not going to be big enough. So bear with me while I cut some of these and we'll just take a look then at where we go. So. I'm just going to use two fabrics. You can go to town, you can use however many you like. Um, they say, you know, go, go anywhere from six to ten on some of them. That's great. But I suddenly thought, you know what, what if I wanted just a toned down, really subtle one? What would happen then? So we're going to find out. find out. Your cutting instructions are really clear. Okay, so it says pieces one and twelve, and I want these in red. They are going to be two and a half by eight and a half inches. So that's pretty easy. I've got these doubled up. So two and a half strip I've already cut by eight and a half. There we go, that's that bit done. There might be a little bit of, of stitching, of cutting as we go, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, here we are. So this is my first, and I'm going to pop that absolutely dead on where it says. Oh yeah, okay, absolutely dead on. And that's where we're going to go. Now, the next one is number two here. And for that one, I'm going to get one of these here. These are my Liberty ones that I yeah, cut it earlier. Now, instantly, I worry it's a triangle. What's going to happen? I'm going to be sewing with a quarter of an inch, by the way. That's what it asks you to do. Now, I'm going to line it up along that edge. June Taylor has thought of everything here because on the wadding, it gives you edges to line those corners up to, and then when it's done and it's turned around, that will sit beautifully up there. And you're all good to go, all right? But then it also gives like your dog ears for where you need on this bit. It's very clever, very clever. So I'm gonna pin all of those don't go through all the layers, don't, you know, because again, you can just distort everything. So just loosely pin along there. Or if you want to pin it that way, then do. But just make sure that that line is not going to move when you take it to your sewing machine. And if you need to just roll that down, and we're just going to sew along that line there, quarter of an inch.
And it doesn't matter if you run off a little bit. If you want to use a walking foot, then do. Now, if you want to leave your ends long to pull through and tie off, um, then do that. I'm not going to just for speed today. But what you can see is that we've sewn that line and then you're going to finger press that up. And that will go up to that line. And you can see it's sitting on this blue line here. There's my number two, so that's how I knew it was my second piece. Um, and then I can then pin that. God, I've just got rid of my pins and I'll do it. I'll do it properly when it's flat, but you will then just pin that and hold that there. Finger press as firmly as you can along there. If you've got one of those rollers, then whip that out. That's always a good thing. And I will just pin this side back down there so that everything just stays in place. Now, the next piece is here. It's number three. And that's going to be one of these pieces here. Now, again, it's going to be right sides. But can you see, this is the really clever thing. And this is what I wanted you all to see. Um, was as I lay that down there, what we've got is this line here for me to get that edge into. So I know I've lined it up correctly. And the same up at the top here, I've got these two blue lines here and that will line up beautifully into there. I'm going to pin everything then we're going to sew it. Okay, so three and four are the same. Um, they've done it in that order, so we'll sew it in that order. It's not like me, is it, to actually do as I'm told? But <laughs> there it is. So just making sure that you've finger pressed, finger pressed. And we'll just, there we are. And then that goes there like that. The beauty, actually, of um, using a plane for the alternate one here is that I know I don't have to worry about right sides or anything like that. <laughs> I'm all good. Now, we are working on a bias, but I've, I've best pressed this so it's all prepped and we are good. And again, on this solid blue line, I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch along there. And then that will be that one done. And then we'll do there. And that just builds all of that up to, uh, to look like you're flying geese. It's very clever. So again, my quarter of an inch. Now, I think if you're starting out for the first time with the quilt as you go, you know, it doesn't matter if you go over slightly on the edges there, but just bear in mind, you will see it on the other side. So if you want to be super neat, stop on the line. And again, if you, if you were doing the actual quilt, this is going to be your lining, so you're not going to see it, but with a quilt, you would. So again, we're going to push those away and finger press, finger press, finger press, and then pin. Now the principle is exactly the same with all of June Taylor's quilt as you go. It's this, just in whatever pattern it is that you want to do. So obviously this would be repetitive for me to do the whole shebang. And you say, okay, so <laughs> I've just lined that up there. Having those little doobity doobity what's it, technical terms, <laughs> over there means that I'm going, why isn't that lining up? Because I haven't put it right sides together. Instantly, I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's it. That lines it up. 
I'm slightly over on this side again I'm working with a bias sometimes that is to be expected but if I've lined those up then I know the line that I need to to sew on so I'm just gonna again lightly pin those on and I will go on that line there and sew through Okay, so it really starts to build incredibly quickly. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Um, so again, I use uh, my, my patchwork pins for this. You've got quilting and patchwork. The patchwork are finer ones and, um, and they are, they just slide through the fabric so beautifully. They're really lovely and easy to use. So then I will get my next piece pop that along their right sides together. This will be probably the last one that I show you and then we'll go on to, there are so many bits I wanna show you to this. But once you've got this technique, then you are, you are good, you can do all of them, all right? And this is the same with the thermal bag. This is the same with any of the quilts as you go. This is, this is it, you know, this is the technique. Um, and if at any point, like I'd gone, this, this one here had gone slightly over that blue line, you can always put your ruler on and redraw that line on. As long as you are sewing on that line, you're gonna be accurate and it's gonna look great. So let's just do one more here. pins on there. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at how this is now looking. So Oh yeah, that's beautiful. My points are perfect. Yep, yep, beautiful. There we go, absolutely perfect. So I would build that up, finish off all of these, sew all of these in place. And then once you've got all of these in place, you want to trim back on the blue line. Now, like I said, what I would do, um, if you're at all worried about this, is have sewn with a contrast thread, just a long stitch on that line so that you can then trim it from the back and not have to worry. So let's have a look at how we're gonna do that with another of these. So. This is one of those things that to do this start to finish would take quite a long time. So I am going to skip just odd little bits for you. Um, mm, mm, mm. Okay, so this is a quilt as you go. It's a slightly different design. Again, some beautiful fabrics on there. Uh, so. So that's everything on there and the next thing to do is to go around and stitch less than a quarter of an inch um, in from that line um, really 
if you want to, you can hand baste it if you want, but it's just to hold everything, everything in place there. Um, so you can go ahead and do that and then you would trim everything back and you want to trim it on the line. Okay. I'm not going to make you watch me sew a straight line <laughs> all the way around. Use your, okay, the other thing to mention is not to press directly onto the wadding, especially if you've got the polyester wadding. Some of these change. So the quilters you go, a lot of them are um, polyester wadding for the quilts. These bags are 80-20, cotton polyester. But again, it's just best until that fabric is actually on there um, and you know you've got to that stage not to press because you don't want to damage your wadding it's just a little warning they give in there um just covering themselves i guess so again i can see those lines because they went past where my fabric was going to be and so this is the stage at which i want to trim everything back so that's That's the first half. This is where the long quilting rulers are a joy and a gem. And you can see up here, you know, I've gone over a bit there. That's absolutely fine. But I've still got this line that I know that that is where I'm cutting to. That's where I'm going to. And then you get lots of off cuts for your stash. Now, do you remember when I did the bolster cushion? This is the sort of stuff that went in to fill that bolster cushion inner if you're making your own inner. I'm not worrying about the bits where we're going to box the cotton, uh, the bottom, box at the bottom. Now, if your fabric is slightly wrinkled or anything like that and you're not pressing yet, use your ruler to just smooth across and you'll be all good. Spinning it around. And again, you can see I'm using my ruler to just push everything out to that side. And again, if you haven't, um, if you haven't sewn and basted everything around, then it's just a really nice way to just make sure that everything is where it needs be. And it's coming up really nice and neat. Now you can see my hand is just travelling up to just put that weight down so that things don't move and slip Whoops, out of the way. And then this one here. Now, of course, at this point, you've cut off those edges that overhang to show you the way. Um, but you can line this up because you've cut a straight line. Assuming you've managed to cut a straight line, then you'll be all good to just line up with your ruler on those edges. And you know that you're going to get it at the right angle. Now, that's it sort of cut. But we've got these bits here to trim out. Um, I wouldn't do those with a rotary cutter. I just wouldn't because um, you just don't. You can over. You can over. You can overcook it, and you don't really want to do that. So I'm going to go in with a nice sharp pair of scissors and trim. And again, on that solid blue line, trim. Solid blue line and trim. Yeah, this is where you want a pair of scissors that you know are sharp to the tip. There we go. And that's 
that's the starter of your bag. Now, you then want to fold it up like this. Match up those edges. Okay, so you have got various ways to do this. Um, you can, at this point, sew with a quarter of an inch down these sides here. Absolutely fine. You can do that and it'll be great. You can overlock. You can zigzag. Um, and that will give you those edges. Um, and that's what, they, that's what they say to do in, in the book. And that's absolutely fine. I'm going to show you two different ways. Okay, so let's just sew with a quarter of an inch down there. If you want to clip so that you know everything is aligned, then please do. But I'm going to show you that way, and I'm going to show you another way. Now, I would sew these with this one. With a half inch. I I don't like to use a quarter inch when there's that much wadding. So I'm going to go with a wider seam allowance here. And uh, I'm using a contrast thread. So actually I think there we are. So just going forwards and backwards you can because you can always trim it back. And again, if you want to use your overlocker, then that's going to make it really strong. And that's great. I do really love the Liberty blenders. Even their blenders are classy. Yeah, I should probably have put my walking foot on for this. So then what you would do is, oh, hello, I've managed to sign myself out. Um, is then press that seam open. If you want to trim it back and make it, take it back to that quarter of an inch, then do so. You can just trim that and neaten. And then just press it open. And then that will just, that will look neat if you press that open. If you want to get your pressing ham in there, then do. It's all good. There we are. And as you're pressing, all I'm doing is making sure that this line is going to be in the middle of the, the sort of V that it goes to, the base of the V that it sort of goes to. Now, although I'm using a different quilt as you go pattern, this is the same technique with all of them. So just, it doesn't matter. I wanted to show you this with different patterns. And just show that whichever one you go for, this is this is the same technique. It's only what pattern you've stitched on the front that is different. There we go. So press that seam open. And you know, you're cool with that. That looks quite neat. No problem at all. And I've got that aligned centrally there so that this is now nice and flat so that we can then stitch across that bottom and we've got um, our box bottom. Forwards and backwards.
this is where um, the NX7, the beast, as I call it, is so wonderful because you can just pull down your walking foot as and when you want it. Now, if you are after um, any of the sewing machines, just email us just to check stock on them. Um, we do have them. We just ask that you just check stock because we, um, yeah, the, the pandemic means that shipping containers, there's a lot of demand on them. So I've just trimmed that back. So that is your seam. It's neat. It's going to absolutely do the job. But can I just show you another one that I've done? If uh, Here we go. Now, this is an option. This is just another way, an alternative way. If you don't want any of that showing, it's just to French seam it. So let me just show you the difference between the two. So this is how they show you. That's perfectly neat. All good there. You'll just see that. And if you wanted to overlock, then you could have overlocked those edges and then sewn it. And that would all be really neat and you're great. Um, the other way, and again, this isn't put in there, is just, especially if I think if you're going to wash your bag at all, then that's just French seam, so you can't see it. The only bit that you can't really French seam is that is that boxed bottom down the bottom. Now I just need to neaten that up. But I could always make myself uh, a little bit of binding with my new binding tool, yay! And, um, and pop that across there if I wanted to, if, if that, but that's right at the bottom of the bag, so you barely even see it. It just means that when I'm looking at the inside of the bag, there's nothing, there's nothing there to see. Whereas with this one, if I look in there, I'm just gonna see that seam. So it's entirely up to you. It's just different, different ways that if I show you, if I give you the, um, if I give you just different ideas, then, then that's great, isn't it? And all you would do is have your lining fabrics together and it feels so counterintuitive to sew on that line there. So you just sew down there, trim, trim back, so quarter of an inch, um, and then turn it inside out and with a seam allowance of just over a quarter of an inch, um, you can feel the lump from where that seam is just so on that line. And that just keeps everything um, really, really neat and tidy. But you have to sew from the outside first for your French seam. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Then just box it as you did the other, completely the same. So that's just to give you um, some options there. Now, let's look at the binding. Let's bind this one that's at this stage here. Now, yesterday I introduced you to my fabulous binding tool, which loads of you loved. Um, so well done if you managed to get your hands on one of these. We'll, we'll be posting those out. Um, and you can make your bias binding. I actually use this to attach two lengths together, which gave me a whole length. And it's two and a half inch strip, but then I've got a nice long length and it is just attached. Yes, I've finally done it on the bias. And it's a small thing, but my goodness, it's far less bulky. When I didn't have that tool and I was a bit rubbish at it um, and it always used to go off at a bit of a wonk, I'll be honest, and then I'd get a step and then, oh, it was just a bit of a pain. But now, now that I've got that tool, I am, um, yeah, it just works. Here we go. Dee, 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 dee. So you've just with this, you can, of course, you can bind it as we did yesterday. You can make your bias binding where you do it in half and, um, and then you um, just fold those edges in and use your bias binding tool like we did on yesterday's show and go round. That's not how they tell you to do it in, well, 
The instructions are slightly looser on here, so you can do it either way, or you can um, go round. Here we are. as we're going to do. So we did the other way of binding yesterday whereby you then fold those raw edges into the middle using your Fabinu Bias Binder Maker. Or you can do it so that, and I probably should do this with a different colour binding. Let's just neaten up. Um, all these edges, you can see this has been sat around for a little bit. It's a bit, there's a bit of fray going on. And that, I mean, that's what happens. This has been a UFO for a long time. Um, there we are. Leave yourself plenty, plenty of leeway there. And then just, if you want to clip it all the way around, then do. And then you'll just sew that around. Now, we'll do this. Yeah. Clipping as we go. And this is why if you um there. and I'm just I've put my clips in because I'm going to sew from the top. I've put my clips in with the flat side on underneath so that that's just going to spin round through my uh, my sewing machine. And I want to leave myself quite a gap there to attach that binding. Now, there are different ways that you can do it. If you want to do it and be super posh and you're happy to, you know, undo that cut that end and line it all up so that you you do it on the 45 degree line then do that if that feels too much for you then I'll show you the straight edge weight do what level feels right for you that's that's what I would say um, and if you are really happy to cut that there open that up and do it so that you've got them on the 45 degree, so you'd open those up. Then do that, but if that feels a bit wobbly for you and you're not quite sure, then I'm gonna show you just the really easy way because this should, this should be fun. Um, let's swap some threads around. Uh, 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 uh. He's dark blue, don't I? What have I done? What have I done with all my threads? I've got some there. Bear with me. We might. <laughs> I don't know what I've done with them all this morning. Really want to go in with cream. Uh, let's go in with cream. Let's go with our grey, trusty grey, that blends into everything. Let's do that. Are you all still all right? Oh, hello. I've managed to get rid of all of the. Can you buy the velvet by the meter, please? Yes, Donna. Yes, you can. Uh, we will sort that out for you. If you send a little message to SJ, info at natashamakes.com. We've done that. We had a lady um, who wanted some for making uh, like a little nip jacket, a little sort of bomber, uh, bomber jacket. Why am I re-threading with exactly the same colour thread? Good morning, I have woken up. I promise, I promise, I promise. Are you all making good use of the codes this morning? Again, it, I, was, I was trying to work out 
how to do it for for everyone to get the best and was it reducing this reducing that and i thought do you know what not everyone's going to buy the same thing so it's just easier to put a discount code up um so i hope that you've um taken good use of that this morning there we go so um, if you want to then just clearing the decks a bit here then you can now go forwards go backwards do a do whatever it is that you know you want to to secure that and then whiz around but this is why you've got your clips flat and I, I know this is teaching a lot of grandmothers to suck eggs here um, but it's just so that that will move smoothly along there with the wonder clips you have or quilters clips whatever you want to call them um, that is the only thing by the way if you do do a French seam just go easy over it's a little bit more lumpy as you go over What I should have done, of course, is stick a pin in rather than clips to tell me, to kind of denote when I'm getting back to that area where I would just want to leave a little bit. Okay. And I'm just going to leave that there for a moment. I've just popped in um, a little triple stitch just to hold that in place and then we'll take this off what I want you to see is for quite a lot of leeway here now the best I've seen this done multiple ways um, and if you are new to this then leaving long tails is great and then let me show you here And this is often a bit that gets sort of skipped over because the instructions kind of leave you to do this to yourself. And I kind of don't want to leave you to do this to yourself. So, like I said, you can do this on the 45 or you can just, if you're new to all of this, it's absolutely okay just to do it nice and easy on the straight like this. No one's going to tell. It's fine. Um, now, fold it so that those edges a butt. They don't go over, they just a butt like that. And this is where you then pop your pre pop your iron on it. And all that's going to do is pop a crease in there for you to work with. Okay. So then when you open it up, what you might want to do is just Re repress that only because obviously it's been folded so one crease is going to go one way one crease is going to go the other but you want both creases going the same way so use it as a marker just repress it so that they both go the same way God, I've got all serious and technical on you this morning haven't I I'm sorry about that but you know sometimes you just got to haven't you there we are so that's there. Where is it? <laughs> I've lost it. I've managed to iron it out. Oh, no, there it is. <laughs> well done, me. <laughs> Finger press it so that you do not iron it out. <laughs> because you do want that. Now, you see, maybe it is that I've done that a little bit too close so I can't open it out fully. 
in which case you can always readjust it or if you want to just finger press it and that's fine. What you want to have basically are those creases to just help you put those together Put those two creases together. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And if you want to, you can always mark it. But then put those creases. Mark them, pin them, do whatever you need. I'm going to pin the top of it. I'm going to pin the bottom of it. Pin, 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 pin. And if you need to, just mark that line on where you're going to sew. I had, where's my little handy five? I had my little ruler. Oh, do you know what that'll do? Anything that's going to mark it is going to work. Just mark that crease line so that you know exactly where. where you're going to stitch. I mean, if you're happy to use that, that, um, that crease line, then you're all good. And then just stitch a line. I just remember to pop your needle back into the center so that you can just Stitch down. Now, before you go chopping anything off, check, just check that you are happy. Yeah, look, that's exactly, exactly where I need it to be. Okay, so I'm happy to now trim these tails off quarter of an inch and then just finger press them open and you are all Good. I don't know what I've done with my little ruler. A big one it is. Hey, we've got a ruler, it's all good. If you need to repress your binding, then do. Just finger press them open. So there, you see then you can just finish off sewing stitching that in place and all is well with the world remember to go back onto your quarter of an inch stitch and there we go and around we go I'm concentrating today when it's not my pattern it's like yep gotta concentrate and then little stitch back and we're all good um, and that's your binding all in place as you need it to be and then you're going to push that away now you can press that away if you want because you know you're not going straight on to it's just the raw bind uh, the raw wadding that you don't want to um you don't want to do oh, nice and crisp this was my thing this year was that i was absolutely gonna get binding licked um totally and utterly so just roll it away if you want to press it you can um and clip 
and you're going to stitch around from the top uh, let me show you now because here we go I can show you this here so you roll your binding away and it's going to be longer on the back there so you're going to go around and stitch in the ditch there which will then make sure that your binding is attached at the back and that's going to look really smart from the front okay so that's what you would do i'm just looking at time and thinking let's look at um, the other thing which just sometimes lacks for me lacked maybe a little bit of clarity or um i just wanted to show you uh, another way to do things and oh, do you know what i aha. do you remember the other day i was doing um doing something that needed an accurate hem on it and I was like I just you know use a piece of um what was it use a piece of cardboard or something and then I found these and I'm in the process of bringing these to air uh, but 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 what you want to do with your handles is this okay you have to cut a 33 inch strip and then I might just need to check because you've got to go back um, is it half an inch, they ask you to, to fold, to roll it back by a quarter. I can't quite remember. Anyway, the markers on here are in quarter inch increments. Let me just see what it tells you to do. So strap construction, fold short ends of your two and a half inch fabric strip a half an inch the wrong sides and press so i mean this one is a plane so it doesn't really have a right or a wrong side per se but we let's move everything across Woohoo! what you will want to do is fold that across you can finger press it to start off with the second line on there and you can use those those holes in there to mark and like I say I'm just getting these away I should have these in the next week or so hopefully um, and then you can just use your iron and press and it just makes it perfect I knew someone out there would have the gadget oh, look at that beautiful um, and here it is uh, so this is it's for dressmaking. This is the thing, isn't it? Sometimes uh, things overlap and you're like, oh, yes, that's the one. So in my search to bring you dressmaking this year, I found this and I was like, well, that's what I needed. That's what I needed. And then what you will do is um, get your straps and you will cut them properly. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? I put them down here. So you know when we when we first cut out the um, the bag, we left a, a good half an inch, didn't we, all the way around? Well, these bag straps you want to cut absolutely on the line. Now, obviously, they're on wadding, which can be a bit wobbly. So you're going to use your nice long rulers for this just to make sure that everything is cut nice and straight. And it's a two second job. As long as like me, you don't try and do it too quickly and then go off the end of your ruler. That's not ideal. Less speed, more haste, or is it more haste, less speed? Which one is it? And what's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference anyway? If you need to just have a little tug and a little rearrange of your wadding, then please do so. We'll just do one because the process is exactly the same but I did want to show you all of this. 
because otherwise it's easy to run out of time, isn't it? And just go, oh, well, you know, you just do that. It's easy. Um, and sometimes it isn't for everyone. So you will have, obviously you won't go cutting off bits like that, but this should sit really nicely on that piece that you've just, you've just cut and those ends will fold over. Let me see if I can show you this. Okay, so your end is gonna fold over really nicely on there and then make sure you've got it kind of in the middle and then just get your iron and you'll press that over onto the middle there okay so if you want to finger press it first then do but you'll do that and you'll do that on on both sides you know so this will then come across and then you'll finger pressing first is really great helps the treat as you go down and of course I've best pressed this as well so it's all it's all good trying to keep that central and you go oh well there's a bit of a gap in the middle there that's fine don't worry you'll press that all the way down and those ends there I'm going to show you because what happens then is this this comes into play and so you're going to line this and that will then sit over over the top like that but you're going to do it in your contrast so take one of your two and a half inch strips and again you've got to cut it to the same length so you're going to cut it and the instructions say to 33 inches now 33 inches what's that that's going to be if i cut that in half that's six Sixteen and a half. Pop my edges there. Is that right? Fifteen is thirty. Two lots of sixteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I cut this on sixteen and a half. Now it says again two fold over by a quarter of an inch and press we'll do that with our new little gadget that I'm going to get in for you next week we are gadgets galore gadgets galore <laughs> rather than cutting up cereal packets like I've done in the past and drawing the increments on ah no cut it the wrong end anyway no oh no that's no good is it hang on a minute Hang on one cotton second. There we go. How did I manage to do that? Ah, I want to do it from the fold, that's why. <laughs> That'd do it. Well, aren't I a ditzy Dora some days, eh? There we go. <laughs> Try and cut it in one thing. <laughs> Come on, we were doing so well. We've gone nearly an hour and three quarters without too many hiccups. You know, you know. <laughs> what did you expect? Dee 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 dee. There we go. Now, this bit of strapping, you'll see that they're, they're all done, they're all done. And you're going to go, oh. 
that will tuck in there and that will tuck in there if it doesn't quite trim it back but the only thing that I wanted to really show with this is that when you fold it over you can either do this like you're binding if you want so you can um, you can do it like we made the binding yesterday and it can sort of sit in there or if you want to fold it over and encase it stick it down with um, that will go under that fold a bit at the end I wonder if that should have, I think that's more than a two and a half inch strip. It should be cut to two and a half inches, by the way. Um, fold it and then stick it down because you pin, you'll bend your pins if you try and pin through there. Stick it down with your wash away tape. And then you see that will then go over the top of that. And what you'll have is then a beautiful two-tone strap like that so you've got that bit there and all of your gubbins all of your foldings there isn't that a lovely strap isn't that gorgeous so that's going to go on my red one and then you'll stitch down clip down one side and then that'll hold it in place while you stitch down there then you can take your clips out and then stitch down that side I hope that is clear <laughs> the more we do I just I, oh, I want to be able to do more and more and more with you um, we've got so many gorgeous fabrics and goodies and things to make and whatnot on the show uh, let me show you again the size of the if you're going for the thermal one it's big that's the size of it but what I would say is I've put planes on there and the planes go with those as well. Uh, you've got, you can pick out the red from there. You've got the gold and the blue in there. So it works with that collection as well. Um, the lining, if you grab yourself a meter, then you can do your binding and your lining in the same one. And that works for all of the bags as well. Or if you're just going to quilt with them and you just want to have those planes to mix through. So I always try and bring you some planes as well. Um, right, let's see. Recently made half apron. Also use it uh, for simple strap tops. Uh, love it also for zip pouches. I don't know what you're talking about, but okay, good. Good, good, good. Um, uh, I've made lots of Liberty pouches and have three meters waiting for a special dressmaking project. Haven't had the courage to use it yet. Oh yeah, no, Inga's going to have three meters of this and is going to sit on it until we do dressmaking on the show. I know that's what's going to happen. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, Claire had never heard of Liberty before sewing quarter. I didn't know the fabric came with brands. I thought lawn was grass in the garden. So no, Liberty lawn fabric. Um, it's uh, the the cotton the torn the torn the cotton torn blah, 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 blah. the Liberty Tana lawn helps if I actually say the right word is um, it's a it's a special place that they that this cotton grows uh, that they get it from and it's famous for its really long thin fibres uh, that's the sort of research that you end up doing when you're a bit of a Liberty geek uh, Liberty uh, niece had a baby last year so I made bibs with your pattern in your kit for the baby with matching face coverings creative goods template and sanitizer carriers you see Margaret that's it isn't it that's 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 the dream we're living the Liberty dream here because a we can't go to the shop um, and b it's really really expensive so it works a treat um, the big on Liberty in the States, just so that you know, it's Liberty of London. Well, yeah, no, it is. Absolutely, it's Liberty of London. Um, I'm making a Dear Jane quilt in Liberty fabric. Oh, Deborah, that's going to be amazing. The Dear Jane quilts are phenomenal. If you've not seen them, they are absolutely beautiful. Um, the lady who initially made Dear Jane quilt, and there's a whole book where you can follow and you can make the blocks. Um, the, her menfolk were away at war. So I guess it's how she kept her mind off it. And she just made this incredible, incredible quilt. Um, oh, yeah. So Anna also makes binding with leftovers. I've got cardigans and trousers edged with it. It's that bit of class, isn't it? Grab yourself your liberty. Flowers? 
oh lovely flowers have just arrived don't know who from um but i do have i know who those were from Geraldine. they are stunning by the way um Liberty, my first job was on Oxford Circus. Many a lunchtime spent in Liberty Fabric Department, agonising because I couldn't afford a dress length of Tana uh, Tarna lawn. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, just beautiful. Oh, Pam, you were late, got carried away with housework. You need to have a firm talk with yourself. Housework? What? What? Oh, dear. Um... Teresa can't find the double-sided toweling. It's up now. You should be able to have it up with you now. Um, Sarah Snaggy Fairbank Williams, still one of my favourite names, says, Morning, Natasha. Lovely to see you this morning. Do think uh, that your saddle maker friend could make me a special saddle. It would be lovely if she could. Um, Michelle, if you're watching, do you want to make a saddle? Otherwise... I have a friend down west that makes the most amazing western saddles. He takes on commissions. They're about two grand, you know, but they're tailor-made for you and your horse. They're beautiful. They're on my dream board. Um, and blah, blah, blah. Let me see. I use Liberty for cushions. Yeah, perfect. For Christmas, I had a roller towel that was all toweling except for a band at each end that held Velcro in place. Oh, I've just lost it. Blah, 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 blah. Um to make it into a roll, great for your toweling and liberty. Plus, um, oh yeah, make the tiny bits into, into covered buttons. Perfect, we've got covered buttons, we've got lots of covered buttons, and that's that little special thing, isn't it? We've got those on the website. Beautiful as fabrics, as always, on your show. Thank you very much. Uh, Elizabeth just received her Helen McCook kits. Happy days, happy dance. Oh, Ems, what you got, sweetheart? Come on. Oh, okay. Come on then, sweetheart. What you got? What you got? Can you carry them? Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Wow. Emma, do you want to come and say hello to everyone? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mummy. Yes, Emily. Did you, did you give us these flowers, Ems? Do you want to say hello to everyone? Hey, you look in that camera there. Hi. <laughs> yes. That's you, isn't it, in that screen there? Um, so this morning, one o'clock this morning, Mummy, should we go and eat? <laughs> no, it's one o'clock in the morning, we're not going to eat. We go to the kitchen, eat toast. That's what you wanted to do, wasn't it? Go to the kitchen and eat toast. I said, no, you're going to sleep. To which you no. said, can't we go and have fun? No, my belly. It's your what? My belly. Your balloon. All oh, right, that's it. We've lost the balloon. Em, um, just say goodbye to everybody. Give everybody a wave. Bye. Good girl. Go on then. You can have the balloon. Yeah, I don't know how she didn't spot that one yesterday. Thanks, Em's. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> You know, you just go, she's an old soul, like a proper old soul. Hi, Natasha. Congratulations on your first birthday uh, from Natasha Makes. Super nice result. We're happy with you as a customer. Good luck on the next anniversary. Oh, it's from one of my suppliers. Look at that. Do you know what? I... Um, I've just been blown away by all of your messages and everything for this. I'm, it's not going to be a great long speech, don't worry. But you guys have been amazing. Um, my suppliers have been amazing. This show wasn't planned this time last week. This was going to be Helen McCook. And obviously she had to isolate. So all of a sudden we were down a show. And then Monday's show was meant to be something completely different as well. And the fabric didn't arrive. It got held up as so much fabric has for the last year. Um, it got <laughs> held up. So all of a sudden, this time last... No, it was Wednesday last week. I was sitting there going, I've got a, ma a massive event. <laughs> and the two shows that I've planned, I now don't have. This is the joy of live TV. And my suppliers were so amazing. I rang them and I was like, right, what can we do? What can, what can we do? And they sent me samples uh, to decorate the set. So I have 
also, not only do I have to thank these guys for their flowers, that's Rhinetex, thank you very much for those, they're incredibly beautiful, but I also have to thank the guys at EQS um, because they absolutely stepped up to the plate and went, we can supply you with this, we'll lend you our samples, we will help you. I couldn't ask for more support, both from you guys, from my suppliers. It's just phenomenal. I mean, look at all of these beautiful samples. Susie, um, who came and made the throw and go bag, she's made a lot of these uh, because she does a lot with Liberty. She's super, super talented. Even down to this, look at this, how beautiful this is. So I just have to really say a big thank you to them. Um, we are only as good as our suppliers. You know, if I, can't, if I can't get it, I can't sell it to you guys, I can't supply it to you guys, but just look at that. Isn't that beautiful? This is out of the Liberty fabric. Isn't that lovely? Just in tiny, tiny patchworky pieces. One colourway one side, another one the other. You've got all of that in there and the green on there. It's just gorgeous. Love those roses. So, you know, it's one of those things that I am incredibly lucky to work with. So amazing people on air, off air, guests, suppliers, the whole shebang. Um, yeah. Wow. I'm a bit, oh, I'm feeling a bit emotional. So I'm going to go and be emotional. I'm going to say thank you to you guys. My thank you to you is the discount codes. Please use those. The thing that I completely forgot to mention, and SJ will probably be shouting at me, is that for every purchase made, you get like a, a, like a ticket, a lucky draw ticket to win um, one of those Liberty boxes. They've got 11 fat quarters in there. So we'll have two winners, which we will announce on tomorrow's show with Jane. Jane is doing the block of the month, which is where we started a year ago. Um, and we're partway through again as we were a year ago. So that's what we're going to do tomorrow. I've also got a lovely launch um, to give you a heads up. We're going to do a pre-order tomorrow for, again, one of my favourite designers. So that's going to be on the show tomorrow. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. In the meantime, I'm going to catch up on all your messages because when I think, see things like salute to the Krangle, I, firstly, I wonder what Elizabeth's been up to. Secondly, I love the fact that Ginny and Elizabeth get on and yet they live, you know, half a country apart. It's beautiful. Um, Jane said, December before last, had a family weekend in London, bonded with my daughter, lost the message, lost the message. where was it? Uh, with my daughter-in-law, <gasps> perfect, over fabrics in Liberty, seems like a lifetime ago, but happy memories. These are the important things. It's that, isn't it? And Alison says, oh, Natasha, this fabric is beautiful. Ordered the blues, but really love this collection. Um, you have such fabulous taste in fabrics. Thank you. Um, I also have amazing suppliers. Um, what are the widths of the fabric? 44 inches is what it is, Patricia, because it's quilting. It's officially quilting weight fabrics, but you can use it for dressmaking. You're just going to need a little bit longer. Um, uh, uh, ba, ba, ba. Um, <laughs> uh, this is uh, oh Shirley's put herself in a fabric buying ban why would you do that why would you upset yourself uh, oh oh do you know what I completely forgot to say oh <gasps> I can't believe I forgot to say oh my goodness right at the end um I managed to get a hold of this <laughs> Stroking it quite a lot. This is um, this is actually from Moda, but the reds just worked. The reds work really nicely with the collection. And if you are quilting with your Liberty, this is 108 inches wide. Let me show you it here. So that's what a meter would look like. Keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. Yeah, 108 inches, super wide basically. Um, it's got a very, it's mercerized uh, cotton. It's 100% cotton, but it just feels so beautifully silky. It's gorgeous. And I just want to give you a real close up on it because uh, it's got a beautiful little paisley. <gasps> and that is 108 inch, it's available by the meter. 
I can't believe I forgot because I was going to say you can line, you can, you can, yeah, you can use that to line your bags if you want, if you've got some left over, you know. We were having a conversation about when to skimp and when not. And um, this was with one of my supplies yesterday because I've just ordered some lovely backing fabrics. And I said, I don't understand. You put all the time and effort into having the most beautiful fronts of your quilt. The first thing that anyone does is pull it back to get underneath it if it's on a bed. And if you've skimped on the back and you don't have a beautiful back, I've got like, oh. So I know that sometimes the backing fabric is an investment, but I just think if you've spent all that time and money on the front, let's make the backs, Cave says, make the back as beautiful as the front. Um, and I agree wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. Oh, gosh, what a morning. I can't, I, there's so much on here. I'm sure I've forgotten other stuff, but um, we're going to do more with the toweling. I know I didn't get around to that. Um, I've got lots of different, like, gosh, so many ideas, but we will get around to that. But it does, um, it does make beautiful bibs, face wipes, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to go, I am going this time. I like the person that never leaves, aren't I? So I <laughs> will see you tomorrow morning. Use your discount code. It's valid until midnight tonight. Um, we will announce the winners for the competition tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock with lovely Jane. Take care. Lots of love. Uh, stay safe. Stay home. Stay sewing. That's all. That's what you need. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.